In the short term, the problem is these kinds of diets are going to result in constipation, aggravation of hemorrhoids, fatigue, and if they're the more severe kind and you stay on them for a little bit longer, what will happen is you'll get dehydrated, acidosis, you'll lose your appetite, you'll get nauseated. In other words, these are the symptoms of sickness. You will become sick in the short term. In the long term, these kinds of diets that promote meat and dairy products and not enough plant foods, these diets result in heart disease, strokes, cancer, kidney failure, kidney stones, osteoporosis, and a whole slew of problems that are common to your friends and neighbors. And what happens is when you get the carbohydrate out of your, out of your diet, your body doesn't have its usual preferred fuel, which is carbohydrate. Instead, it has to burn fat. So it burns fat from your body, it burns fat from your food. A byproduct of fat burning is ketones. And so when you're on these diets, you check your urine to make sure there are ketones in your urine. Well, when ketones appear in your blood and your body, what happens is they suppress your appetite so you lose weight. So here's how the diet works, and this is why it's so successful. You go on the diet, you eliminate all carbohydrates. Well, the body prefers carbohydrates, and as you'll learn in a few minutes, the body actually requires carbohydrates, it has to have them. So what the body does first is it takes two pounds of carbohydrate that's stored in your body invisibly, in the liver and in the muscles, and it burns up those two pounds of carbohydrate over the next 18 to 72 hours. Now mixed up with that two pounds of carbohydrate are four pounds of water. So you just lost six pounds within a day or two. And you go, wow, this is the greatest diet I've ever been on. Well, it's been basically water. And then when you go into this ketone state, there's lots of acids produced in your body, and you lose a lot more water because the body's trying to get rid of the acid. And then the ketosis sets in from all the ketones in your body. You can smell it on your breath. It smells like acetone. You can measure it in the urine. And what happens is ketones suppress the hunger drive. You see, this is a natural mechanism that's built into people for times of survival. Ketosis occurs naturally when you get sick. When you get sick, you're supposed to be recuperating. You're not supposed to be gathering and preparing food. And so if you're sick for a period of time, and significantly sick, what happens is the body goes into ketosis, and you get a chance to just rest and recover. The other time that ketosis occurs is when people starve to death. I mean, it's very painful to starve to death. It takes a couple of months. So the first couple of days is very painful. That's all you can think about is food. And then after about three or four days, you go into ketosis, and that relieves the pain of suffering of dying from starvation. It's a survival mechanism, a survival adaption the body goes through. So you can at least try and figure out how to keep yourself alive instead of just focused on food all the time after you go into ketosis. Now, because this diet works by a mechanism that naturally occurs when people get sick, I call this a make-yourself-sick diet. And because this kind of diet is associated with short-term and long-term illnesses, I can further emphasize that the Atkins kind of diet is a make-yourself-sick diet. That's why so many people fail on diets, is they get hungry. That's why you need to find a diet where you can eat as much as you want of food that not only causes you to be trim, but also healthy, which is the kind of diet that we're teaching you. Worldwide, People on high carbohydrate diets are thin and healthy looking. You've seen this. You've seen it in your travels. You've seen it on travel logs on television. You go to the airports and you watch people walk through. When you see people who live on high carbohydrate diets, they look great. For example, the Asian people. In Japan, the word for cooked rice is the same word for meal. And the word for breakfast is the same word for morning rice. In China, the same word for food is rice. And they have a saying in China. They say a meal without rice is like a beautiful woman with only one eye. Remember that one and try it on a friend sometime. <laughs> and in China, instead of saying, hello, how are you? They say, have you had your rice today? In India, the first food cooked by a new bride for her husband is rice. And in Indonesia, you can't get married until you know how to skillfully prepare rice. Now, how could that food be so bad when it supports more than a billion people in excellent health who are more active, younger looking, trimmer than the people who eat a low rice diet, who avoid the diseases that are common to the people who eat a diet that's high in protein, high in fat, and low in carbohydrate? And that's what you see when you look around the world. You can pick many, many countries. People who eat high fat, 
high protein, low carbohydrate diets are fat, they're sick. People who eat high carbohydrate, low fat diets are trim and healthy and active. And that's the way you want to be. And you can make that change in yourself. It, is not, it has nothing to do with your race. It has nothing to do with your country of origin. It has to do with what you've learned.